Hey, I'm Robert Cooksall Manufacturing. Uh, we got our AC36 and uh, just want to go through, show you a few things about it. Um, start with on the AC36, we have several different options on it. Um, starts with a 30 horsepower electric motor on it. We offer a 40 horsepower electric motor, a 38 horsepower gas engine, and that's our uh, Kohler fuel injected Command Pro Series engine. Um, we've got a 49 horsepower Yanmar, which is what this machine here is, and then we have a 67 horsepower diesel Yanmar as well. The 67 horsepower di diesel, uh, Yanmar diesel, that is the fully loaded machine. It comes standard with our mudsaw debarker, comes standard with our computer set works, has our mega system, which is a little bit different, a uh, little bit larger roller guide system and then our drive bearing assembly is larger in size as well. So with any sawmill, uh, the blade, that is going to be the heart of the sawmill. Everything's got to be built around the blade. If the blade is not cutting straight, the rest of the sawmill is not doing any good for you. Uh, so getting to our blade, we've got uh, doors here. Um, they are hinged, easy access, easy to get into our blade and make changes. Um, go ahead and pop this one open. So a big heavy rubber latch here keeping the door shut so it's not going to pop open on you when you're sawing. We've got 26 inch band wheels. Um, they are all steel wheels. We have a lot of time. We've got a lot of um, equipment to grind these wheels down. Uh, there's a little bit of crown and that is what's gonna track our blade. Um, can we use a standard pulley, uh, put a V-belt in it and call that a band wheel? We, we could, um, but there is big benefits for having this steel wheel. We can machine that down, I can control it, there's no in and out movement on that wheel. So when that blade's running through, it is running pencil line smooth. We don't have that stretch and pull on our wheels. Now we'll see, got a good four to 5,000 hours of runtime out of these band wheels. Um, so they're not maintenance free, but you'll get a good life out of them. You can send them back to us. We can resurface them here. Machine shop can do it for you. You can do it yourself. Um, but there is some crown on here tracking that, and they are precision ground and balanced. Um, so a lot of benefits of having those steel wheels. But you've got your drip system, um, and there's a felt pad that is gonna wipe on the blade on the in-feed side, and also on the out-feed side. Uh, they're easier to see on this side here. Um, you've got it on the in-feed and the out-feed side, but for the video, there's a ball valve on top, Turn that on and then I've got a sight glass dripper and I wanna run about a drop or so a second um, through this going to, down to our felt pad. Now there's a needle valve so I can control that. My sapier woods, I may turn it up a little bit higher. Harder woods, drier woods, I may turn it down. Um, but that is gonna keep that blade clean. If we had those belts in our band wheels, putting diesel or putting oil base on my belt is not the best thing for it. Um, so with the steel wheels running that oil on our blade, keeps my blade cleaner. Um, a clean blade is gonna stay cool and it keeps our band wheels treated. So that system works very well hand in hand together. Sure. Um, our filler cap for this mill is up top. You've got about a two gallon reservoir in here. Um, what we generally run is off-road diesel. Now you can put a kerosene in it, a paint thinner, um, automatic transmission fluid works very well and automatic transmission fluid has a lot of rust preventing properties um, so I could even argue that it works better than the diesel fuel. Now on our roller guides, so blades spinning around the band wheels, we don't have the pull and stretch on it because we've got the crown wheel so it's running nice and smooth. Our control on it is going to be through our roller guides. Um, we've got eight way adjustment built into these roller guides. There's square head bolts on the back, so I can use those square head bolts and I can tilt my guide up and down, left and right. I'm able to pull it in and out towards the blade and then I can adjust my vertical height up and down here. So I've got very precision uh, adjustment on these roller guides. If my blade's not lined up straight going through the wood, I cannot expect it to cut straight. Um, so I do have to keep this in alignment. Now that's not something you're doing every day or every time you change a blade. Um, I'd say good maintenance would be check it every 100 hours. It takes a couple minutes to check that. We've got other videos uh, that walk you through how to do it. Um, but that is very important to sawing straight. So we've got the steel wheels, we've got our diesel lubrication system, our drip system lubrication system, and then our roller guides. Um, and that helps us keep that blade running smooth, running clean, and then we've got full control over it. Um, and that allows us to utilize the rest of the saw, maybe our hydraulics, the bigger horsepower to be able to saw faster, saw straighter. On our roller guides, uh, this is our standard system. Um, they do have Zerk fitting on, on each guide. 
about four hours of run time, we want to uh, put a couple pumps of grease in there. Uh, there is a lot of sawdust flying around, um, so I want to keep those well greased, well lubed. Um, but being able to grease these guides and not having sealed bearings in them will allow me to get more life out of it. Um, so a little bit extra maintenance, but I do get more overall life for uh, them being greasable. So we do have a inch and a half wide blade set up on this mill, um, but the AC36, I am able to set that up for, I could set up for an inch and a quarter blade. Uh, don't know that I recommend it. Uh, inch and a half is generally what we like to see on them, uh, but I can also set it up for a two inch blade. Um, and each mill that can be interchanged uh, from one size to another, so you're not set on the way that it's built for. Uh, that's uh, easily, um, changed by the, the owner, um, but inch and a half is what we have this one set up here for, and if you're interested in setting up for two inch, we can certainly do that for you. So we talked about our band wheels, we talked about our roller guide, our drip system. Uh, tension system is the uh, next part of uh, what makes us, gives us better control over our blade, um, better blade life. We are using a spring inside of our tension system. Now this is half inch plate, very heavy duty. Uh, it gives us the ability to track it so I can tilt my band wheel left and right. So if I were to put the inch and a half or a two inch or an inch and a quarter, I'm able to tilt that band wheel for tracking. So I've got that ability built in. And then whenever we're increasing our tension, it is done on a jack and we're compressing this spring down. Um, so I am measuring tension on that blade by how far I compress that spring down. And we've got a little key stock up here, and I want to crank that till it touches our wire. Now that'll be preset from the factory. And whenever my key stock gets to that wire, I know I've got correct tension on the blade. And it's set, and I'm ready to saw at that point. Um, that spring gives us a live tension. So when that blade's going through the wood, especially when it enters in, it's going to stretch a little bit. Now blades stretch very little, I mean it's less than 10 thousandths, uh, more than that they're, they're going to break. But that little bit of stretch when it enters in may give you some movement, um, that blade getting into the log, a little bit of rise or dive on it. That spring acts as a live tensioner and it takes a lot of that out. Um, so I'm able to enter in my log at a higher speed and stay stable with it cutting straight. So we've got our drive bearing assembly on the drive side of the mill. Um, the machine is driven with a double belt um, going to our pulley. Drive bearing assembly has tapered roller bearings uh, similar to the axle on your truck. We have tried uh, pull block bearings in the past and they just do not hold up to the side load pressure and then the RPMs. Um, so this unit is very well built, lasts a long time. This particular one is our standard drive bearing assembly. Um, it's got a two and an eighth inch shaft. We also offer the Mega on our 67 horsepower Yanmar um, AC36 that has a two and a half inch shaft. So on our saw carriage or our saw head, uh, we are using two by four post. Uh, it is a four post system. Um, so you've got your, your two posts on each side, plus your uh, inch and a half guide shaft here as well that's raising the head up and down. We are using a hydraulic motor on a gearbox, um, and that is picked up with 60 chain. There's four 60 chain pickup points, so that raises our head up and down evenly, keeps the head balanced. I don't have unnecessary wear on it, um, and it's strong enough where I can run through that wood very quick, and it stays stable. I don't have any side to side movement, don't have any front to back movement on it. Um, it is heavy enough where I'm able to keep my blade cutting just as true as it's able to. We've got our handheld remote box. Um, that gives us control over the saw head, the saw carriage. Um, that is gonna be the function for our up and down, for our forward and reverse movement, our guide in and out, and then also our mud saw debarker on it. Uh, we are using electric over hydraulic controls for the, uh, those movements there. Um, so we don't have any electric motors on the machine. Um, we do like hydraulic. We like the electric controls, it gives us a little bit uh, finer control over it, a little bit better um, ease of operation, but it is electric over hydraulic. Um, so we've got the, the ease of electricity, but the power and the reliability of the hydraulics on it. Um, our forward in reverse, forward is gonna be on a toggle switch. So we'll flip that switch, my head's gonna take off. I have speed control from that and our flow control valve. Um, so I can bring that back to zero and I can steadily increase that speed um, for how fast I, I want or I'm able to cut. Um, our reverse is gonna be on a momentary push switch 
and that is going to be one speed coming back to us. We do have the drag back system that's going to pull every board back to the operator, um, but reverse is going to be on a push switch. Um, now, that forward and in reverse system, we are using a hydraulic motor. Um, it is on a jack shaft, uh, so we've got the hydraulic motor going to a jack shaft. We've got 60 chain linking that to our main drive shaft going across, and then 60 chain making a full loop on the saw head. So when that pulls it down, it is pulling the evenly, evenly from both sides, um, gives it plenty of power going down. But when I'm coming back using those drag back fingers, I'm able to pull back a cant 16 by 16 inches square, 16 foot long. Um, we've got the power, we've got the support, the strength to be able to pull those heavy cants back using the hydraulic motor on the jack shaft on our forward and reverse. Um, up and down, we talked about that. We've got the, the hydraulic motor on the gearbox. Up is a push switch, down is a push switch. We also have our fast and slow speed. Um, so I can get to where I'm going quickly and then slow it down to be accurate um, using these up and down with the toggle switch on the fast and slow. Now we've got our scales and that allows us to, to know where our height is. This particular mill does not have a computer set works. A computer set works is uh, very helpful, very useful. It is not necessary. Um, so a good option, but you don't have to have it to saw good accurate lumber. On our scales, they are magnetic, so I can peel these scales off, put different ones in place. Um, what comes with it is gonna be a one inch, four quarter, five quarter, and six quarter. And then we've got our pointer, so I can easily accurately see where my height is. Um, know I'm gonna cut true lumber with it. Our guide in and out, so they're on push buttons as well. So our roller guide systems. Um, one is gonna be stationary, the other is gonna be movable, and that's gonna move depending on the, the, the size, the diameter of my log, uh, or the cant that I'm cutting. Um, it is on a push button, so if it's too wide, push the button, bring it out uh, to narrow opposite direction. But that is on a hydraulic cylinder. We uh, have a three-way toggle switch, and that controls our mud saw debarker. Um, debarker works off of pressure. There's an eight-inch carbide tip blade, um, and that rotates, and that's going to cut in front of our saw blade. Um, and it's going to create a little bit of path in our wood. It's going to knock any mud, sand, grit, debris, rocks out of the way, and it's going to give us longer blade life. Um, so when I'm operating, I'll take my switch, bring it in. That's going to push the debarker out towards the log. Um, again, that works off pressure. So I, now when I come back to central, it's off, and then come back to out, it's going to retract back to home. So very light pressure coming in, and that allows that debarker to kind of follow the contours of the log. Um, so I'm not sitting there staring at it, trying to, to move it in and out with my controls. I switch it in and it's just going to kind of follow along with the log. One of the log, I bring it back to home, bring my board back to me and start on the next cut. So that debarker operates on a hydraulic cylinder. Uh, that's going to bring it in and out, controls the pressure, and we are able to regulate that pressure. So if I've got some heavier bark or uh, lighter bark, I can control how, dig it's, how deep it is digging into my wood. And then we have a hydraulic motor that is rotating our blade, um, and it's just cutting a path. The blade doesn't have to stay sharp. A blade doesn't need to be sharp. It's just scraping any kind of debris off of it to give us a clean path to cut through. So our log handling, we've got our log lift. Um, that is four half-inch plates. Um, it has a three-inch cylinder, one on each side of the arm, and that's able to pick up 8,000 pounds. So I can get a good-sized log. Um, this machine's able to handle 36-inch diameter, 21-foot long. Um, you're going to have a hard time finding a log that fits in those sizes that's heavier than 8,000 uh, 8, pounds. So I can pick up just about any log that will physically fit on the machine um, with our log lift, and that is operated on a hydraulic lever. Um, so I'm able to get the log over onto the frame. Um, now we've got several features inside of our frame. First is our dog clamps. Um, on our dog clamps, we're using a hydraulic motor, and that is going to pick that clamp up and down and you've got two that come standard with it. Um, so up and down. Now a good thing about our clamps is when they are all the way down, uh, there's a little spike or little beak on here, and that will grab a square edge. Our bottom cut on this mill is gonna be a one inch board. So I can bring that clamp all the way down, come over onto a squared cant, and I do not have to worry about cutting into it. On every rail on our bunk, there's a little spike here. We call it a cant spike. Um, so once I have those square edges, my squaring arms, they'll come down as well, 
and I'm able to hold that log and I can cut down to one inch on my last cut without having to worry about cutting into them. Um, so that is very, very helpful when I'm sawing, especially in a production situation, and I'm not worried about cutting into any of my components here. On our squaring arms, they are operated with a hydraulic cylinder. They move together, so we've got two that come standard with it. I also have an option to add a third one if I'm doing any short logs, and it would um, be positioned here, and they'd all three link together. Now these squaring arms, they are heavy built, they're gusseted, they're reinforced, um, so they're able to take a little bit of beating, but I use that with my log turner to rotate logs over, square it up. And if I'm not cutting square lumber, um, I've got a lot of work to do on a planer, it's almost not worth doing it. Uh, so I wanna keep these in good shape, um, or I want them to be heavy enough to hold up to, to be able to rotate those logs in and keep my lumber square. Uh, on our tapers, you've got a taper on the front and the rear. Um, two come standard on it. They do have a roller on it. Um, so when I get my log on there, I wanna keep that heart centered on my log, keep the heart parallel to the cut. Uh, can't create wood, but I can get better quality wood using those tapers to, to level and center that heart out. Um, the roller's on top. If I get the log up there and I don't quite like how it sits, I do have the ability I'm able to shift it um, a lot easier than I would if I didn't have that roller in place. Um, they are helpful there. If I've got a stack of lumber on the mill, I can use those tapers to pick up my whole stack, get my forks underneath it, and pick it off that way. Um, so several uses that we like to see out of our tapers, um, but they are operated with a hydraulic cylinder and then a, a lever to control them and they do move independently on our tapers. Our log turner, um, this is where our power is. Um, 120 roller chain on the turner, very, very heavy built, um, hydraulic cylinder pivoting it up and down. There's a hydraulic motor that is rotating it. So when we're loading the log onto the mill, it does load into our dog clamps. Um, those dog clamps do not have to stay in alignment to do their job. They are there for clamping and clamping only. Um, if I load into my squaring arms, and I do that thousands of times, even though they're heavy built, that is putting a lot of wear on them, uh, keeps them harder to, to stay in square. So we bring them into our clamps, and then we use our log turner with the 120 roller chain, and that rotates the log over, and I can a uh, little more easily come up against my squaring arms on it. Um, so that's a big benefit when the log's on the machine, um, not dumping into my squaring arms every time. Now there's some other advantages to that as well. When the log's on the machine, we make our first cut and that cut is entering in from our stable side. Because the clamps move, my movable guide arm, our roller guide that's on the blade, will be moving from the same side as the clamp. So I'm entering into that log from my most stable side on the roller guide and that gives me a little bit better quality cuts as well. We're also not chasing the bark around the log. Once I get that slab cut taken off and I rotate my log over, I have my clean face butted up against a squaring arm. Again, the blade's entering from this side, so I'm not chasing that bark around the log, so I don't need my debarker as often if I have it installed on this machine. So our sawmill frame, our base, um, three by six tubing, heavy wall, uh, twin frame. So that tubing is one solid piece from uh, end to end. Now, we do offer extensions on our mill, so if you want a little bit longer length than the 21 foot uh, standard cut, we can do that. That's not a bolt on, that's not a weld on. We start with a longer piece of tubing. So it's very solid, uh, holds up very well. Uh, we also have um, tandem axles on the machine. Um, brakes on both axles. So when, when we're towing, that head will sit right over the axles, pin in place. And with the tandem axles, the heavy frame, it tows very well um, at highway speeds. I tow it clear across the country.
That's our demo on the AC36. Uh, again, we appreciate you watching our videos. If you've got any few, or any additional questions on the sawmill, uh, please give us a call. Um, you can always ask for me. My name is Robert. Um, we can certainly get you set up on a meal or answer any questions that you have on it. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you would, like, subscribe, comment, um, any feedback, we sure appreciate it. Uh, we'd love to hear it.